Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to Ham Cured Smoke and video number 21 in our ICOM IC7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to finish up the voice recorder settings on page 6-8 in the manual and then we're going to look at the voice transmit memories and how you use those. Let's get to it. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the options you have for the recorder. At the top of the screen, of course, is the record start, and if you press that, it'll start recording. This is also accessible from the quick menu, and I'm not sure I showed you that when we started recording the contact. Let's just uh, get out and take a look at that quickly. So if you just press quick, you have meter type and then record start. So you can start, and then if you are started and you press quick, you can do record stop. So back into the record menu. Play files, we just went through. And player set, we looked at that, and the only option in there is the skip time in seconds. So let's look at the recorder set. And there are quite a few options in here. So record mode, TX and RX, or RX only. So you don't have to record your transmitted audio if you don't want to. TX record audio. So when you are recording the transmit audio, you can record it direct or out of the monitor. Now, if you recall, when we looked at the monitor functions, one of the options for the monitor is you can put a little bit of a delay in there, and that delay will be part of what uh, is heard if you record it from the monitor, and it'll also follow the monitor volumes if you record from the monitor. So I leave mine on direct. Then record condition, and you see here it says squelch auto. We can go in, and the options are always or squelch auto. I'll explain that in uh, a little more detail when we look at the file types here. File split, and I'm sorry, that's what I meant by file types. The uh, file split, and that's turned on. And what this does is if you turn this off, when you press record, it will just start recording continuous audio, and it'll be one large file whether you start transmitting or whether you're receiving. So it'll switch back and forth between transmit and receive. You'll hear the switching, and it will be one large file. And the metadata for that file will be the frequency and the time when you started recording. If you leave file split on, which is the default, it will create separate files every time you transfer excuse me, switch between transmit and receive, as you saw back when we did the playback. And it will also create a separate file every time the squelch closes, if you have the squelch auto set for the record condition. So if you set this to always and you have the radio squelched, it will keep recording in receive mode even though there's silence. Uh, and I'll explain how these can be useful uh, in a minute here. Push to talk auto record. The default is off. If you set this to on, then you don't need to press the record start to start recording. If this is set to on, every time you push the push to talk on the mic, it will start recording. Once it starts recording, when you release the mic, as long as you get a received signal within 10 seconds, it'll re record the received signal, and then it'll re continue recording the conversation back and forth, transmit and receive, and it will record until either the squelch stays closed for 10 minutes or you don't transmit for 10 minutes, and then it'll automatically drop out of the recording mode. And then pre-record for push-to-talk auto-record. And this, you'll notice right now, is set to 10 seconds. That's the default. And you have choices of 0, 5, 10, or 15 seconds. What this does is if the push-to-talk auto-record is set to on, the rig will 
essentially in the background be recording all the time and receive. It won't be saving it to the SD card, but it'll keep a 5, 10, or 15 second buffer. And when you key the mic, if you have that set to 10 seconds, the first thing that it will write to the SD card is a receive audio file for the 10 seconds preceding when you pressed the mic. Then it'll put an audio file out with your audio from the mic and then continue on with transmit and receive audio from there. So that's the rundown on everything you can do. Why are all of these functions useful? Let's say you are running a net or let's say you're doing emergency communications and uh, you're on a set frequency and you're going to be running a, a net for uh, a hurricane. Hurricane Dorian happens to be going through right now. It's finally winding down, but it's been in the news for the last week as I'm doing this episode. If you were the net control or one of the operators for a net, you could turn the automatic functions on, You could, or you could just start recording, but if you have this set up for uh, automatically creating separate files with the file split, and you have the squelch auto condition, you can squelch the net so that you're not continuously recording audio, and you could record all day long or perhaps for several days, and on one SD card, you'll have enough capacity to record all of the net operations for a very, very long time because it's only making files when there's actually receive audio or transmit audio going on, and all of those files will be organized by date and time. So you could go back through and use that for, you know, recording records about the net, records about the event. Uh, there's many things you can do with that that would be very useful. So that's it for the record function. It's quite powerful and uh, provides a surprising degree of utility with all of the different options that it gives you. Let's take a look at the transmit recording function. The way you access this is you press the menu and then you have a voice option up here at the top center with a picture of a microphone and if you touch that that will bring up the voice transmit record memories. There are eight of them. And as we're doing this, just like with the QSO recorder, I learned that the radio will not play the recordings back through the line out. So you're going to have to listen to it through the speaker again. So let me turn the volume up again on the speaker. Now you can see I have a couple pre-recorded here already that have the names there and you see that those display on the buttons. So to get to the option to record these you use the record slash set button here. We'll press that and we're going to go to record. We'll cover set in a few minutes and this shows you all the memories and then you can scroll through them or you can use the up and down arrows to scroll through them. Again, I've got two recorded here already, and you can see the name that I gave them and then how long they are. This one's 7 seconds. This is 11. Uh, memory number 1 is blank currently because it's got dashes, so there's nothing in there. So let's go in and record something in memory 1. You simply touch the memory, and then that brings you into the record screen. You have a little VU meter here to show you your level. So I'm going to use the built-in mic. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Test, one, two, three, four. And I think the level is about right. The manual tells you to adjust it so that it stays below 100%. So I'm going to try to keep it around 80. If you do need to adjust it, you touch the mic gain button here, and it defaults to 50%. You can adjust it up and down. Um, with the buttons or I think no yeah with the main with the main dial instead of with the multi dial and I'm not sure why they do the multi for some of these functions and the main for others but that's the way it works so I'm gonna leave it at 
and to record you just press the red record button you do not use push to talk on the microphone if you press the push to talk it'll dump you out of the screen and and go back in um, oh one other thing that I'm going to show you let's let me get back out of this for a moment if I turn the squelch back down and then I go into the memory screen you see the audio goes away the radio does automatically mute the receive audio when you're in this screen so you're not recording you know receiver audio in the background so let's do our recording hello CQ 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 this is whiskey alpha 2 India Victor Delta calling CQ and standing by and then you just press the stop button to stop it and you can see that my recording is 10 seconds I don't know if you noticed while I was recording on the far right here it showed a minute 30 that's the maximum that you can have for any single recording um, I'm not sure what you would record that's a minute and a half long but you can record up to that much for each message so we can now play it back to hear how it sounds hello CQ CQ, CQ, this is Whiskey Alpha 2, India Victor Delta, calling CQ and standing by. So that's all there is to that. So now, if we go back out, if I press and hold the, the uh, memory that I want to work with, it takes me into the quick menu. I have clear, which if I press that, it will erase the memory. And then I have edit name. So let's just give this one the name of CQ. And press enter. Now it's named. We'll exit out. And then now you can see T1 is CQ. And T2 is my response that I pre recorded. And then this is a 73 and QRZ. And I'll show you how you would use those in a second. So once again, I've got my power all the way down, but the radio does transmit just a little bit of power even with it set to zero but I'm on 10 meters at night here and I expect the band is pretty dead but let's just double check QRZ is this frequency in use whiskey Alpha 2 India Victor Delta I didn't expect anything so to transmit CQ you just simply touch the button with this menu up on the display Hello, CQ. CQ, CQ. This is Whiskey Alpha 2, India Victor Delta, calling CQ and standing by. And then that's it. It automatically keys the rig, as you saw, and it automatically unkeys it when it's done and goes back, back into receive for you. So that's really all there is to it. Now, if you were in a contest and you wanted to have some pre-recorded responses, let's say you were working field day and you called CQ, somebody came back to you, and then you wanted to give them your uh, station type and section, you could just simply have that pre-recorded and touch the button. Please copy 3 Alpha Kansas from Whiskey Alpha 2 India Victor Delta. And then you could use the microphone in between and then you know do any parts of the transmission that are not going to be standard each time and then once you finish up your contact then you can have a pre-recorded 73 message QSL from Whiskey Alpha 2 India Victor Delta 73 and good luck this is Whiskey Alpha 2 India Victor Delta QRZ and, of course, I've got that one pre-recorded so that if I was on a particular frequency calling CQ, then I've got the QRZ in there at the end. You could record another one if you were responding to somebody else's CQ and you weren't trying to steal their frequency that just said, you know, 73 and good luck or thanks and good luck or whatever. That's pretty much it. Now, you can adjust the transmit level right here. And again, the default is 50%. You can turn it up or down, and you can use the ALC function to adjust to make sure you're not overdriving your radio. And if you have it adjusted to anything else, if you press and hold the default button here, it takes it back to 50%. Uh, I've found, again, that usually 50% seems to be pretty good as long as you've recorded the 
the message using the VU meter and you have that adjusted properly, 50% on the transmit level seems to work just fine. So then let's take a look at that set menu. We were using the record menu. In the set menu, there is an auto monitor function and that's normally set to on. Um, you probably want to leave it on. What the auto monitor function does is if you're using a hand mic or whatever kind of mic and you're using your radio with the speaker and not with headphones, you probably have the monitor turned off because otherwise you would get feedback from hearing your own audio while you were talking. What the auto monitor on does is that if you're using the voice memories, the radio will override the monitor and turn it on regardless so that when you're pushing the buttons you can hear the audio as the radio is transmitting so you know what it's transmitting. Uh, so I would suggest leaving that on. You may still need to adjust the monitor volume, um, but, you, uh, but you won't need to make sure that it's on. And that also works because if you're transmitting in between, you know, using, using the microphone and your voice for the non-standard messages, you don't want to have to worry about turning monitor on and off. Repeat time. Uh, this is if you want to have it transmit messages in a loop, and I'll show you that in a moment. This is adjustable basically from 1 to 15 seconds. The default is 5, and I'm going to leave it there because that's probably a, a good delay time. And I'll show you how that works here uh, as soon as we get out of this menu. So th those are the only set functions that you have. So let's get back out. Uh, you notice when I pressed the T1 or any of these, it just transmits and then finishes and then stops, goes back into receive. If you press and hold any of these, it will put the rig into a loop where it will continuously repeat the transmission and it will pause between transmissions based on that repeat time that you set that we just looked at. So let's try that. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ. This is Whiskey Alpha. And you see also that it puts the little repeat loop here. So when it finishes, it'll go back into receive. And then after five seconds, it will restart again. So, and then if you touch it, that'll drop it back out of it. So that's a really handy feature, again, if you are in a contest calling CQ, particularly if the band conditions aren't very good. Uh, the rig will sit there and repeatedly call CQ for you. And if you do get a response in between, you can, again, just touch this button. You can briefly key the push to talk button, uh, or you can hit the exit button. Any of those will take it out of that continuous loop. So that about covers it for the uh, voice transmit function. And it is a very, very handy function for contesting. As you see here, you've got eight choices for, you can leave some pre-programmed for different contests. You can reprogram them each time, whatever works best for you. But I have used these several times for either special events or for contests and find them to be very handy and they will save your voice and save you from some hoarseness. Well, that covers us through Section 7 now. One note on Section 6 and the voice recorder functions. As I was finishing up this episode, I realized that there were a couple of pages that I missed in Section 6 that cover how you can use the on-screen menus to manage files and folders. You can delete files and delete folders that you've recorded. I will cover those in a future episode. But just one, um, I guess, tip or hint with that is I find it actually much easier to just take the SD card out of the radio and pop it into a laptop and use the file management, whether you're using Windows or Mac or Linux, and you can delete folders, delete files, or copy folders, make backup copies and whatever on your PC. So I think that's a little better way to go anyway. But we will cover the on-screen stuff. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the programming, please consider subscribing. You can use the little button that pops up in the lower right corner of this video at the end. And I would appreciate any likes. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham 
cured smoke.